Hi, everyone. Well, a few months ago, we talked about a family who had 12 sons. And if you remember, their names were Reuben and Simeon, Levi and Judah, Issachar and Zebulun, Dan and Naphtali, Asher and Gad, and Joseph and Benjamin. And if you recall, Joseph was the favorite son of the father, Jacob. And Jacob loved to send Joseph. And one day he decided to give him a wonderful present. And so he gave him a beautiful coat of many colors. In fact, it probably had many more colors than this robe does. And so he gave that to Joseph and everyone who saw Joseph with that coat, they knew that Jacob was saying, oh, I love my son. Well, the sad thing about that is that it made the rest of Joseph's brothers, except for Benjamin, because he was the youngest, it made them very, very jealous. They were very jealous. And they let their jealousy cause them to do something that was absolutely terrible. One day they took their brother, Joseph, and they sold him to some traders that were going to Egypt, they sold him as a slave. But you know what? Actually, what those brothers meant for evil, God meant for good. You see, Joseph's brothers, they thought they had all the power. They thought they were in complete control and that they were doing everything that they wanted to do. But actually, God was in control. And God went with Joseph to Egypt. And even though Joseph went through some really hard times and really unjust things happened to him, still God was with him and God used Joseph to save the lives of many, many, many people, including the lives of his father and his brothers. And so that was quite amazing. And so they lived there and they settled down We're going to turn these pages over, a couple of pages, to, oh, we're going to find where we're going, because they settled down, not in the United States, no, not in South America, not in Asia, but in Africa. They settled down in Egypt. It's a good little geography lesson there. So they settled down in Egypt in the land of Goshen. And so they lived there because of the famine. And they stayed there. And so Joseph's brothers, they all had children. So they had children, draw some heads. And soon... Those children had children. And then those children, they had a lot of children. And soon, the land of Egypt, the Bible said, was filled with the Israelites. There were so many of them. And then a new king came to power. So here's my king. A new king came to power, and he didn't know Joseph. He didn't know who Joseph was. He didn't know the story of Joseph. He didn't know that Joseph had saved the land of Egypt from starvation. All he knew was that there were a lot of people called Israelites or Hebrew people living in the land of Egypt, and he became afraid. He thought, what happens if we go to war and those people decide to side with our enemies and fight against us? And he thought, we've got to do something. And so he came up with a really bad idea. He decided to make the Israelites slaves. And so he put slave masters over them and he forced them to work really hard. And in fact, he forced them to build store cities called Pithom and Ramesses. And They treated the Israelite people very cruelly, but the more they oppressed the Israelites, the more numerous they became. 
And so they worked them really, really hard. But the harder they worked them, the more they grew in numbers. And the more they grew in numbers, the more the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. And the more they worked them ruthlessly, the more they grew in numbers. And the more the Egyptians came to fear the Hebrew people. There was nothing they could do. They would just keep growing in number. So Pharaoh realized that this wasn't working. So he came up with another plan that was really terrible. So he called the Hebrew midwives to see him. Now the midwives were the people, sort of like doctors or nurses, that helped the women have their babies. And so he called them to himself to talk to them. And their names were Shipra and Pua. And so he called them and he said, listen, this is what I want you to do. When the Hebrew women are having their babies and they're just being born and you see that one of them is a boy, I want you to kill him. Can you imagine? Shipra and Pua must have been shocked. Kill the babies. Well, you know what? They were afraid of the king, but they were more afraid of God. They knew this was wrong. They knew this was evil. And so they decided to not do what the king said. They didn't obey the king. They obeyed God instead. Well, soon, Pharaoh, he noticed that his plan wasn't working. There were still baby boys happening. And so he called Shipra and Puam to himself. And he said, what's going on here? Why aren't you killing the baby boys? Can you imagine how they must have felt? How afraid they must have been? But you know what? They knew something. They knew that while Pharaoh, it's true, could kill them, he wasn't as important as God. God was to be feared more than Pharaoh because God made everything in the world and everyone in the world, including Pharaoh. And so they said to Pharaoh, Oh, King, Egyptian women and Hebrew women, they're very different. And so when the Hebrew women are having babies, they're just really fast. And so when we get there, the baby is already born. Well, God was happy that Shipra and Pua feared him and that they obeyed him. And they couldn't have children before. But after that, God blessed them with families of their own. Well, that plan wasn't going to work. And so Pharaoh came up with an even worse plan. So his plan was that he told all the Egyptian people that any time a Hebrew woman had a baby boy, that they were to throw that baby boy into the Nile River. And there were all sorts of things there, Nile crocodiles, and the babies couldn't swim, so they were going to die. Well, around this time... There was a man, and his name was Amram, and he had a wife, and her name was Jochebed, and Amram and Jochebed had two children, and their children's names were Aaron and Miriam. And one day, Jochebed discovered something. She discovered she was going to have another baby. She must have been really worried. What if it was going to be a boy? She had to wait nine months. Nine months of waiting and wondering and worrying. And then the time came for her to have the baby. And guess what? It was a boy. She must have been so afraid. Well, she tried to hide the baby, and she managed to hide him for three months. But babies grow, and, and he came to a point where she couldn't hide him anymore. What was she going to do? Well, she came up with a plan. She got a papyrus basket, and then she coated it with pitch on the inside and the outside to make it waterproof. And then she took her baby... And she put the baby in the basket. And then she put the basket in the Nile River, hidden with the reeds. Well, 
Jochebed must have gone home. But Miriam stayed. Miriam went off a little piece and she watched to see what was going to happen to her brother. Well, it wasn't long before someone just happened to come down at that moment to bathe in the river. And that someone was a princess. She was Pharaoh's daughter. And she came down and she noticed something strange there in the reeds. And so she said to her little slave girl, she said, go over, please, and see what's there. I'm curious. And so the slave girl went over and she brought the basket over. And the princess looked inside the basket. <gasps> and what did she find? She found a baby boy. And he was crying. So she took the baby boy out. Gentler than that. Mm. And she felt sorry for him. And she said, oh, this must be one of the Hebrew babies. Well, Miriam was so brave. Miriam hurried over to the princess and she said, would you like me to go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? And the princess said, yes, go. And so Miriam hurried off and who do you think she went to get? She went to get her mother, Jochebed. So she brought Jochebed to see the princess. And the princess said to Jochebed, would you nurse this baby and I will pay you? Can you imagine? Jochebed got her baby back and the princess was going to pay her to take care of him. And so she did. She nursed, she nursed the baby. We don't know the name yet. She nursed him until he was old enough not to be nursed anymore. And then she took him back to the princess. And the princess, he became her son. And she was going to raise him. And so she named him, and she named him Moses, which sounds like the Hebrew word for to draw out, because she said, I have drawn him out of the water. Well, I'm really glad that you got to hear the beginning of our story about Moses. I hope you can join us next time. Bye for now. <laughs>